Hello everyone, uh, thanks for uh, joining this, this talk. Uh, my name is Thierry Carrez, I work for the Open Infrastructure Foundation and I'm the general manager there. Uh, you've seen the keynotes this morning, so I won't explain uh, what the Open Infrastructure Foundation does, but today I wanted to uh, give you um, more of a wider perspective on what open source foundations do uh, as a what's part of their activity, what role do they play in open source uh, in, in 2024. I'm also the vice chair for the open source initiative, which is the body that uh, maintains the open source definition. So I'm, uh, I'm the vice chair there, and I uh, help set out the definition, what licenses are open source, not open source, and all those things. Um, you can find me on Mastodon, I'm also on Twitter and uh, LinkedIn. So, uh, first of all, Taking a step back, you'll see that uh, there are two different models for developing open source. There is one approach that is proprietary. The idea is that a single entity owns the software, a single entity intends to monetize the software, and a single entity chooses the license for the software. And that's a model we are seeing in proprietary software but also yeah, with some uh, single vendor open source companies that uh, choose an open source license for, for a while that may change in the future. And the other approach is to develop open source as the commons. And in that case, it's developed by a group of developers, uh, not a single entity. So nobody owns the software. Uh, all the community is allowed to monetize the software, and in that case, you have to use open source licensing. And open source foundations help in this later uh, case where you try to develop open source as a commons rather than in the traditional uh, proprietary way within a single company. And so if we look at what an open source foundation does, it has all of those basic functions. Um, the first function is to provide guidance. Um, guidance on which free and open source software to uh, license to use, uh, educate how the model works, how educate, educate how, um, how you build uh, as a group uh, software in common. That's the first role of an open source foundation has been for a very long time. The second role, the second um, aspect is an asset lock. It's this idea that you need to have a neutral uh, host for common assets, like the name of the project, the trademark, the governance for the project. You need to have some governance around who makes the final decisions. And for all of that, it's good to have um, a, a neutral entity at the center of the project. And that's a function that open source foundations provide. The third uh, function is acting as a fiscal host, uh, be able to receive money, collect money in the name of the project, and then spend it on specific uh, activities. So collect money from donors and fund specific activities. And finally, another traditional function of an open source foundation is to provide project infrastructure, so hosting, uh, the tools that are used to build the project, like code repositories, change review, continuous integration, testing, mailing lists, uh, forum for communications, all of those uh, activities are traditional functions of an open source foundation. So in summary, the traditional basic functions of an open source foundation is to enable open collaboration, it's to make that collaboration across a number of different actors possible. And so if we look at the landscape of open source foundations uh, available today, there are a lot of different open source foundations. So how can we build the topology of that landscape? And one way to look at it is to look at what uh, open source foundations provide uh, what, what they cover. Um, so if we look historically, the first uh, open source foundations were a lot around programming languages. Because programming languages is the thing that you really want to be open source. You don't want to rely on a proprietary 
or banning language for development in general. So that's why we're seeing a lot of language-centric foundations that are dedicated to promoting the language in addition to supporting its continued development. So the Python Software Foundation, the Perl Foundation that has been there for a very long time, the Rust Foundation, those are all examples of open source foundations that are built around a specific programming language. The second, um, the second category would be uh, open source foundations that are centered around a specific project. So you want to start a new open source project, you want to have an asset lock to protect the trademark, you want to have a fiscal host to be able to collect some money, pay for some servers, and run uh, your, your QA testing on it, uh, then that's a very common uh, solution. So the GNOME Foundation, the Blender Foundation, the Drupal Association, the Matrix Foundation, the OpenStack Foundation when we started, or the Linux Foundation when they started, or the Apache Software Foundations, were all created around a single open source project. So that's a very, uh, very common approach. Then you have uh, what I call domain-centric open source foundations. Uh, that's foundations that are about a given problem space. They are trying to solve a common set of problems that are uh, targeted to a specific group of people having specific problems. So the Open Infra Foundation, for example, has grown out of the OpenStack Foundation and try to address problem about infrastructure using software for providing infrastructure, not just around cloud infrastructure, but also uh, container security and all of those other aspects. So that's a good example. The Sahana Foundation, which is uh, a foundation that is uh, um, around disaster uh, relief uh, solutions, uh, the Open Bioinformatics uh, Foundation or the Open Source Geospatial Foundations, they're all around this very specific problem space. And that's a pretty nice uh, uh, spot to be in because then the, the audience you have when you gather at the common event, they're all interested in the same set of problems. So it's really, really easy to uh, share the same audience across a number of projects. And finally, you have what I call the generalist foundations. Those are foundations that are not specialized in a specific set of problems, but can take on any open source project. So the Software Freedom Conservancy, uh, software in the public interest, Apache Software Foundation, Linux Foundation, Eclipse Foundation, they are all looking at trying to uh, propose to host any type of open source project. And so how do you really compare them? How do you choose one? How do you uh, approach one? I think what, what's important is that the details matter. Uh, you have to spend some time reading their governance documents, uh, reading the bylaws of those various foundations, and in particular, look at who gets the control of the foundation, who gets seats on the board of a foundation. So for example, the Open, at the Open Infra Foundation, we're um, an organization that's funded out of member organizations, but also individuals um, can participate without cost. You can join the Open Infra Foundation at no cost, and that group of people, the individual members, actually have one third of our board seats. So you actually participate, even if you are an individual, you can participate in the Open Infra Foundation governance. And I was that uh, one thing we made sure of when we started the Open uh, Stack Foundation in, in uh, 12 years ago, uh, it's to make sure that we would have a representation of the individual contributors to the project. So it's not just corporations. Um, you should look at what those foundations do, how they spend the money, uh, what results do they have, um, and, and see where where contributing, giving, giving, um, giving your time or your uh, your uh, money to those foundations can have an impact on them. And in the end, foundations are all different. So how do we? How do another way to look at them is to uh, what I call the the why, what, who how framework, which is uh, you can ask different questions. So for example, ask why. All foundations have a mission. They have a reason for being. It's, it's written in their, in their bylaws document. And they might adhere to those principles more or less strongly. So it's one way to look at them. Uh, another way to look at them is to ask what. Uh, so foundations 
have a specific scope or might be a, a lot more topic agnostic. I mentioned the generalist foundations, they don't really care which project they host. Um, uh, other foundations have a much more reduced scope, so it's a really good way of looking at them. Another way is to ask who. Uh, foundations may be primarily defined by uh, who participates in them. Are they centered around the community or are, are they centered around the product? For example, for the Open Infra Foundation, we, we uh, try to have infrastructure providers uh, because that's the people, the people we are trying to solve problems for. And finally, there is the how. Uh, foundations may be more or less prescriptive on uh, which tools to use, what uh, principles to adhere to, how neutral the governance needs to be, which, uh, what, what people should be using as, as tools. And, uh, and we'll see, we'll see uh, more details on that. So uh, I mentioned the Open Infra Foundation. So for example, our why is to make key technology available to everyone, everywhere, to do anything. It's very important for us that um, the technology that is used to provide the infrastructure is not just accessible to Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. We want that technology in the hands of everyone in every country so that they can have sovereign infrastructure in their country. But also, companies that don't uh, want to go through those um, those giants and can build their own alternatives to that or host uh, their, their workloads locally. Um, in terms of the what, like I said earlier, we, fo we focus on open source solutions for providing infrastructure. And that's a pretty specialized scope. In terms of the who, we're targeting providers of public or private infrastructure. And in terms of the how, we have uh, collaboration principles, which we call the four opens. So everything we do is open source. We do open design. You, you just, uh, just across the hall, you have the, the, uh, the, set, the forum sessions. Those are open discussions so that developers working on our various projects can hear about uh, requirements from the users so that everyone can participate in the design of the software. Open development, everything that's happening in development is public, happens on public forums, public mailing lists, public code review systems, and you can see it, you don't even have to log in to see the development being, being, being done. And finally, open community, we have um, governance for our projects that is completely separate from the governance of the foundation to make sure that anyone who contribute their time to the project can be elected to leadership position. So our lead project leadership positions are not uh, reserved for paying companies or anything. It's all about the individual work and what you bring to the project. And we also apply what we call the, the, the balancing the three forces, making sure that we have representation of developers of users and of the ecosystem companies in in uh, in our in our landscape to make sure that they all are nurtured uh, and successful. Because to have a sustainable open source project, we think you have to balance those three uh, those three components. And so, looking at that framework, you can actually map uh, foundations uh, across several dimensions. So, for example, if we just look at the how and the what. Uh, whether foundations are permissive or prescriptive in the way you should run your open source project, and whether they are generalist or specific in the domain that they cover. Uh, you, can, you can basically have examples that the Linux Foundation, for example, is a very generalist, very permissive open source foundation. Whatever you want to do, they will have a solution for it. Uh, at the top, you have the Free Software Foundation, which is also kind of generalist. They try to cover a lot of projects that are very prescriptive. You have to use uh, the free software licenses, like the GPL, uh, LGPL, or, or AGPL, in order to be a free software foundation project. You can't really choose Apache licensing or anything. In the same way, Apache mandates the Apache license. Open Infra is um, close to the Apache model. We still have all those prescriptions in terms of how you should run your project. They're pretty lightweight, and we are very uh, specific. We are addressing a very specific problem space. Eclipse is in the middle, or slightly permissive, slightly generalist, and the CNCF is more like LF applied to a 
a more specific, a more specific uh, uh, domain that has a few, a few uh, restrictions in the way they, they approach the project. So it's slightly uh, more prescriptive than, than the rest of the Linux Foundation. That's one way of looking at the, how we say, the foundation's landscape. But the big question is, who actually needs open source foundations in 2024? Because like, you don't need an open source foundation to have a project infrastructure. You can just go to GitHub or GitLab and have that uh, used to provide as a project infrastructure for your project. Um, there are like websites out there, yeah. like GitHub actually, that provide more and more guidance on open source and licensing. So you don't need open source that much for education. Um, there, are, there are organizations that provide fiscal hosting as a service, like Open Collective. So you don't really need a foundation to receive money on behalf of your project and spend it. And finally, there is even uh, an organization that provides trademark asset drops. So you can have a trademark and they will keep it for you uh, uh, with, with like trademark rules and you don't need the foundation to actually do that. And I think we will see more and more of that uh, in the future, like services that were traditionally proposed by open source foundations being uh, being uh, provided by other actors. And so uh, I think enough to need an open source foundation. The open source foundations in 2024 needs to go beyond making uh, open collaboration possible to making open collaboration successful. That is providing advanced services that increases the odds of the open source project to be successful. Really uh, providing more uh, services towards the success of the project, not just making the uh, providing this neutral ground for people to meet. And so if we look at those foundations advanced functions, um, those for example are pooling resources. Like you may have a group of organizations, they may want to um, uh, they may uh, they may be interested in collaborating openly towards a specific uh, issue and, and pool their resources, money, time and and, and, and people uh, to, towards a specific project and foundations can help with that by providing uh, program management services for example making sure that those people meet make decisions etc another uh, classic function of uh, an advanced open source foundation is to cultivate audiences um, those you may have uh, an event network we have the open infra days at, at the open infrastructure foundation uh, or, or regional summits, uh, you may have social media accounts, you may have websites, and all of those have subscri subscribers, and so cultivating that audience to make sure that you can reach out to them, push messages to them, is, gives those projects that you host access to them. Uh, I mentioned the three forces before, um, balancing and developing those three components uh, actually takes a lot of time and effort as well, and we'll go, we'll go back into that. Um, so, in more details, for example, to support developers, open source, uh, modern open source foundations provide community management, onboarding of new contributors, mentoring of new contributors, uh, project infrastructure support, people that are dedicated to maintaining the project infrastructure that, um, that the developers rely on. Um, doing developer gathering specific events, there was a mention of the PTG this morning at the, during the keynote. Uh, and that's like a specific event that's designed for developers to get together and uh, collaborate on building the software. Uh, release management is also one thing, making sure that the project releases uh, things on time and regularly. We provide user support services um, to cultivate the group, this group to make sure this force is significant. We provide uh, keynote and breakout sessions at events where we showcase those members. We've seen a Hyundai this morning uh, talking about their open stack usage. Uh, we have user-centric special interest groups like the Large Scale SIG, which uh, gathers uh, a, a lot of the large, the, deep, the operators of large open stack deployments. We, have, we support local events and uh, 
and we participate in industry events to make sure that the software is, is uh, represented and, and mentioned. And finally, we have ops uh, dev feedback sessions, making sure that operators of the software talk to developers of the software uh, and make sure this feedback loop is working correctly. And finally, there is a bunch of services that are there to support the ecosystem. Um, so brand building, making sure that the, the brand ma matters. Uh, marketing sites, we do research through user surveys, through commissioned uh, research documents to make sure we get a good sense of what the market looks like. We do trademark management and certification, making sure that the, 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 the names we have, like OpenStack, actually mean something and, um, and that you cannot use it for anything, uh, anything wrong. We provide booth space at those events. We've seen the, the marketplace there that lets the ecosystem showcase their services and products. Uh, we have a website on, on for, for OpenStack.org, for example, that has um, all of our members' offer offerings, uh, all their products and services. So that they are showcased in a cent central location and easily findable. And finally, we uh, provide legal compliance with uh, regulations. Uh, open source is getting more and more regulated. And so uh, looking, at, this is going to be a major activity of open source foundations going forward, making sure that the project, but also the members and the users using those projects are in legal compliance with the laws that apply to them. This might not be for everyone, this kind of advanced functions, uh, because they require a lot of resources, which means they require a lot of money. And so you have to be uh, in an open source project that can gather a sufficiently strong ecosystem to uh, uh, manage to gather the required funding. Um, it's, it, you can't really uh, have that type of high level service without, without a lot of resources, and so you have to be able to have an ecosystem that can sustain the foundation at that level. And so not every project will have that type of ecosystem of companies forming around it that, can, that will be able to, to contribute. We've, we've seen this morning during the keynote the slide that has all the sponsors for the Open Infra Foundation. Uh, without those, uh, this very large ecosystem of companies, we would not be able to support our projects, OpenStack, uh, containers, Zool and uh, Starling X at the level that we are able to do it, like traveling here for, <laughs> for this presentation. And so, in conclusion, uh, modern foundations provide services and assets to make open collaboration not just possible, but successful. Um, if you want to look at open source foundations, you have to look at the mission, the governance, the track record, uh, why, what, who, how, um, the expertise that they have, the established assets that they have. And finally, not every project will need an open source foundation, and that's totally fine. Um, and, and so uh, I hope that gives you a pretty good uh, idea of what we do at the Open Infra Foundation and what other open source foundations do, and you will be able to interact with them going forward. Thank you for your attention.